Welcome to tonight's Open Your Eyes People broadcast. I'm your host, evangelist, Anita Rivera. It is uh, January 8th, 2022, already eight days into the new year. I hope it has been blessed for you all. Uh, if, if you know somebody's tuning in and you're saying, you know what, has been a rough eight days already or just a rough start to the new year, I pray that God turn any curse into a blessing on your behalf. That the favor of God be ascended, or I should say descended upon you from heaven, from, from the Most High. And that uh, he, he helps you and encourages you because truly, uh, you know, the Lord allows us to celebrate each day. Each day being new in his mercy, in his grace. You know, the scripture says that this is a day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. So um, I pray that you receive the blessing of gladness in Jesus' mighty name. All right, listen, welcome one, welcome all. And uh, I, I, I want to, I have a few headlines. I have about three headlines I want to share with you all tonight that continues to prove that we are truly living in the last days. I believe that we are the last generation, according to Scripture, according to the very words of Jesus, recorded for us in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 24. Before I get into the headlines and then share with you the specific scriptures highlighting these current events that are taking place, I first want to bring to your attention very quickly uh, a couple of things. First of all, the First Fruits 2022 offering is happening now. And we have dedicated uh, to Revelation chapter 22. Uh, it is not only fitting, but I believe it is astounding that we are in the year 2022. We're living in the last days. Again, I believe according to the signs that are all around us happening right now in real time that line up with the words of Jesus Christ, that line up with the words of the prophets, both major and minor in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, that line up with the very book of Revelation itself, I believe that it is astounding that the very last chapter of the last book in the Bible, which is the book of Revelation, the very last chapter is none other than the number 22. You heard me correctly, 22. So I, I believe it is necessary and a blessing that we read the very last chapter as we may be looking at the very last chapter of life here on earth. Listen, again, I'm going to share with you headlines. I've been doing this for, uh, was it, 12 years and counting, sharing with you all diligently, prophetically, uh, being led by the Spirit of God in the fear of the Lord, the things that are happening in the world. Again, real-time events. Uh, you know, I, I would even call it at times breaking news, matching biblical prophecy. And here we are in the year 2022. I'm going to read to you the last chapter in the last book of the Bible, the book of Revelation, chapter 22, as a major sign, I believe, of a closing chapter for all of us. Here it is. And he showed me a pure river of water, a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the middle of its street and on either side of the river was a tree of life which bore twelve fruits, each tree yielding its fruit every month. The leaves of the tree were, the, were for the healing of the nations, and there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it. They shall serve, I want to make sure I say this, please forgive me, and his servants shall serve him. Verse 4, they shall see his face, and his name shall be on their foreheads. There shall be no night there. They need no lamp nor light of the sun, for the Lord God gives them light. And they shall reign forever and ever. Verse 6. Then he said to me, These words are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show his servants the things which must shortly take place. Behold, I am coming quickly. Blessed is he who keeps the words of the prophecy of this book. 
Now I, John, saw and heard these things, and when I heard and saw, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel who showed me these things. Then he said to me, See that you do not do that, for I am your fellow servant, and of your brethren the prophets, and of those who keep the words of this book, worship God. And he said to me, Do not seal the words of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He who is unjust, let him be unjust still. He who is filthy, let him be filthy still. He who is righteous, let him be righteous still. He who is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are those who do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. But outside are dogs and sorcerers and sexually immoral and murderers and idolaters and whoever loves and practices a lie. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. And the spirit and the bright say, come. And let him who hears say, come. And let him who thirsts come. Whoever desires, let him take the water of life freely. For I testify to everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book. If anyone adds to these things, God will add to him the plagues that are written in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part from the book of life, from the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. He who testifies to these things says, Surely I am coming quickly. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Praise be to God. Come on. Listen, I want to invite you. As I believe, you know, again, we're entering into this last chapter, or maybe at the final of this, you know, the final, you know, the final part of this last chapter, biblically speaking, prophetically speaking, worldwide speaking, the times that we're living in, the last generation, the signs of the times that continue to manifest itself all around us, making the hour that we're in undeniable for people to get saved, for truly the day of the Lord is at hand. I want to invite you. To take a moment, visit my website right now, www.openyoureyespeople.com. Um, also, a shorter web address, same website, www.emoaf.org. I'll be sure to put the links uh, to the, you know, to my website right under this broadcast or associated with this broadcast. Click on the link, take a moment, and place a holy offering, a first fruits offering, 2022 first fruits offering on to the revelator none other than jesus christ and the work of his end time ministry on behalf of the work of the on behalf of the work of his end time ministry emoaf church and open your eyes people so take a moment and visit our website and do that now um you know this is a holy offering a a sacrificed sanctified consecrated offering a very special offering in honor again of the lord jesus christ the very revelation himself Chapter 22, the year 2022, final chapter of the book. I think it may give us something to think about. Come on. Now, uh, also, we are doing uh, the exemptions. We're still doing that. We're still moving forward. We're, we're helping so many precious people. The new year has come, and you would think that it would kind of, uh, you know, take, uh, you know, take a turn. Uh, it did slow down during the holidays, and so I was hopeful. I was hopeful that this was going to come to an end, and I believe it will eventually come to an end, but when is the question, right? Anyway, uh, you know, there are still, you know, many people in the workforce, in the military, uh, in schools, around the, you know, not only around the U.S., but internationally, around the world, that are still in need of letters of religious exemption. Uh, they need a church to cover them in, in, in honor of their sacred religious beliefs without being violated by the secular workforce, you know, before man, you know. So this is where we come in. We're, we're honored, we're happy, uh, you know, to provide covering, spiritual covering in the name of Jesus uh, for anyone who is seeking uh, that type of service, that type of help. So email me. Again, I'll be sure to put my email address to this uh, 
you know, to this broadcast. Um, it, it'll be where you can see it either in the comment section or right in the more information section or on top of the video if you're tuning in from, you know, Facebook. Uh, anyway, my email address is anita at emoaf.org, A-N-I-T-A at E-M-O-A-F dot O-R-G. Anita at emoaf.org. So um, anyway, just email me. I'll be sure to respond within 24 to 48 hours. And um, be sure to check your spam folders, your junk folders, uh, because there has been times, more times than not, our emails have uh, end up in those folders and so you know you want to catch it before it does so all right friends uh let's see what else i i think that was probably the major updates i think now i could get into uh the headlines now pardon me we've had such beautiful cold weather here in texas and so i'm having some tea some blueberry tea <laughs> it's quite tasty when you have a uh, tea uh, that's already flavored, uh, you know, you don't need to add any additional sugar or anything. So that, you know, that's always a blessing there. Not that I mind sugar, but there's a point to that. <laughs> anyway, it's fine as, as its own. So if you, you know, just don't mind me. I, hopefully I don't, you know, sip too loud, but I may take a sip or two during the broadcast. The weather's been very interesting here in Texas. It was 80 degrees a couple of days ago. It's down to 43 degrees right now. I say let it snow. And then it was cold, uh, you know, a few days prior before the 80 degree mark. We've really been up and down and uh, just very, uh, you know, I say erratic weather. It may get more intense. You know, they're talking about uh, some intense hurricanes that are coming up. And, and I mean, you know, not just a typical hurricane season, which is already, uh, you know, it you know, comes with its problems. But I'm talking about something that they're really concerned about, scientists, researchers, climatologists. Uh, that are saying that there could be a severe and dangerous uptick in tornado activity, hurricane activity. And I wonder, does this have anything to do with the poles, the North Pole, the South Pole, the poles at both hemispheres? Is it looking to shift? Are we looking at a pole shift that uh, may take place very soon? Some say that we could be in it. I don't know. We, we could be. What I do know is that uh, there's disruption. And, and, and it can't, you know, it's, it's hard to ignore. But our, our safety, our haven is in Jesus Christ. Our strong tower, the secret place. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. That's in the book of Psalm, chapter 91. I pray you give your life to Jesus. I pray you submit and surrender every part of your life, every part of you to the King of Kings to the Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ. He loves you. He went to the cross to take upon the sin of all mankind. That includes yours. And he rose again on the third day, defeating death, hell, and the grave. All for you. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son that whosoever will believe in him will not perish but have eternal life. Give your life to Jesus. Cry out to God. I pray the Spirit of God move you now. All right, I have headlines. We got to get right into this because, again, it proves that we're living in the last days. The lateness of the hour. Yellowstone. Listen, I understand that there's there's like a show, a well uh, popular show, anyway, well known show called Yellowstone. I haven't called, you know, I haven't you know seen any of it, but it seems interesting. I've seen the uh, was it the advertisements on 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 the web, and uh, you know. It, it, it could be a predictor, you know, of, of what's about to take place, of what's being warned. Yellowstone eruption warning. Uh, we're being told that human brains could be popped apart. Not a picture you want to imagine in light of this report, uh, but uh, this is what they're saying. Listen, they're saying human brains could be popped apart, quote, when the supervolcano at Yellowstone National Park next erupts, scientists warn in a documentary. Beneath the surface of the picturesque Yellowstone National Park, filled with an abundance of geysers and hot springs, lies an enormous magma chamber. According to an analysis of earthquake data eight years ago, the magma chamber is 50 miles long, 12 miles wide. Anyway, three previous eruptions have formed a caldera. A large volcanic crater formed after the emptying of a magma chamber. This measures 
um, well, this measures a sum 43 miles and 28 miles. They say that the three super eruptions occurred 2.1 million years ago, 1.3 million years ago, and approximately 640,000 years ago. And they're also stating that Yellowstone is due for an eruption. We may even be overdue for an eruption. Again, news we definitely don't want to hear, but I want to share with you what the Bible has to say about Yellowstone. Anyway, they're saying that uh, we are overdue or due for an eruption based on the timeline of previous eruptions. Scientists believe the proportion of molten rock in the magma chamber is far too low to allow for another super eruption, the last of which dwarfs anything seen in modern day. Yikes. Okay, so, you know, let's talk about this. What does the Bible have to say about Yellowstone? Um, in the English translation, uh, it doesn't say the term Yellowstone, but it does give significant indicators. And actually, it comes straight out and says that there will be an increase of volcanic activity. The, the Bible, uh, you know, lets us know that earthquakes uh, will increase in the last days. And when we talk about Yellowstone, we talk about a severe earthquake magnitude activity that will cause this geyser to explode in apocalyptic, cataclysmic proportions that will affect not just the surrounding areas, not just the United States of America, but globally. And, and it, it would be it would be very sorrowful, uh, but it is uh, again a major sign of the times. I, I want to take you to a couple of scriptures um, to at least bring forth proof of what I'm sharing with you pertaining to Yellowstone. The Book of Acts uh, has a prophecy that was spoken by the Apostle Peter himself, and he quoted uh, the prophet Joel, uh, and he said the following in the Book of Acts, chapter two, verse sixteen. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out of my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they shall prophesy. I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Uh, this whole prophecy is literally happening right now. We are living in the last days. God's spirit is being poured out. People are seeing visions and dreams about the times that are upon us and the times that will come. There truly is wonders in the heavens above and, and, and in the earth beneath. When it comes to blood and fire and vapor of smoke, those are direct results of volcanic activity. So we see that as part of biblical prophecy that volcanic activity will increase along with earthquakes that will bring forth the production of the increase of volcanoes. Yellowstone is a very big deal. It is called a super volcano, and I think it's called a super volcano for a reason. I want to share with you another specific portion of scripture pertaining to Yellowstone, and I believe Yellowstone's role in the last days regarding the day of the Lord. And then after that, I have two more reports to share with you. Uh, Second Peter Chapter 3 says the following uh, in verse 7, But the heavens and the earth, which are now preserved by the same word, are reserved for fire into the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But, beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering uh, toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And then in verse 10, it says the following regarding the day of the Lord. It says, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both fire, both the earth and works that are in it will be burnt up. 
Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness? Looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be, will be dissolved, being on fire, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. All right. So I remember back in 2019, I shared with you all how I uh, just experienced very um, interesting, uh, I say, uh, you know, visions, um, very disturbing uh, at times, actually many times. And one that really shook me uh, was a vision, was an open vision. And I was laying in my bed. It was in the early morning hours, but it seemed like I was already in the end of the world. And I was awake. Um, I don't know what time it was. All I know is that it was very early in the morning, but it was a different atmosphere in my room, in the spirit, in, you know, even, you know, from looking at the outside window. And suddenly I saw Yellowstone and it either erupted or was about to erupt. But what came out of Yellowstone was a, I don't know what you would call it. I will call it the day of the Lord. It's the only way for me to describe it. Um, it was something that was very terrible and um i i, I don't i it, it, it was it was scary it was frightening it was um what it would be it, it, uh, it was in it, it, it was a judgment it was a hard judgment and when i say hard you cannot fight it it, it was like stone it reminds me of what the book of daniel says about the fourth kingdom about the rise of the beast system. And I actually want to quote this portion of scripture. I didn't intend to even share what I'm sharing with you right now. But when I heard about Yellowstone and I read the headline, I kind of made an educated decision. I say the word educated is really just by faith. I'm sharing this with you all. I did not plan on it, but I, I think it's, it's, it's important. Um, in the book of Daniel, it says... Um, about the fourth kingdom actually says several things about the fourth kingdom the fourth kingdom is known as the antichrist beast system and um in 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 the book of daniel chapter okay here it is oh this is what it this is what i saw in the book of daniel chapter 7 verse 17 it says those great beasts which are four are four kings which arise out of the earth but the saints of the most high shall receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever even forever and ever amen but then it says here verse 19 this is what i wanted this is what i want to share with you because this is what i saw it's the only way for me to describe it it's, it's how it says here as follows then i wish to know the truth about the fourth beast which was different from all the others, exceedingly dreadful, with its teeth of iron and its nails of bronze, which devoured broken pieces and trampled the residue with its feet. That's what I saw. <laughs> when I, in, in the vision that I had in 2019, Yellowstone, again, either erupted or was about to erupt. I literally saw the day of the Lord come out of it. Almost like as a human figure, but it, it wasn't human. It was the day of the Lord. I don't know how to, I'm just doing my best, you know, to describe it. But the way it looked was exactly as it's described here. It was bronze and iron. The bronze part, I literally saw it, the color bronze. The iron part was that it was so hard. The kingdom was so hard. It didn't come as a castle on earth or some type of, um, you know, like what you would see in maybe in the, you know in the United Kingdom, where uh, you know Queen, what is it, her name, Queen Elizabeth lives over there at um, uh, you know was it Buckingham Palace? That's not what this kingdom was about. The Fourth Kingdom. What I saw in this vision was, it, you, it was you didn't you couldn't be there. It was that. It was not for man. And so. This Yellowstone, I believe, is going to be very, it's going to be part of a major end-time biblical prophecy with regards to the Day of the Lord. Um, I say that because I still remember it as if it was yesterday. And it, the vision, all I can say, like I said, was an open vision, meaning I was, I was awake, I was conscious, I wasn't a sleep dream. 
and it was it visited me it's the only way for me to describe it is that it visited me 2019 was very very interesting with uh, many prophetic very terrible visions and and uh, you know things that the Lord allowed me to see with regards to the times anyway um, I want to share with you another headline this one with uh, this one is about solar storms We've talked about this at our broadcast. I want to bring it up again. This is a later, or I should say the latest report. Solar storm warning. As major blackouts threaten life none on Earth, scientists raise alarm. <laughs> Thank you, scientists. We need the alarm raised. We need people to wake up. God is not interested. Whether you know the latest terms to try to get your political foe back. He's interested as to whether you are saved or not. Are you born again? Is your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life? Because this is the only time we have to be saved. Once we close our eyes here on earth and open them up in eternity, that's it. I know people think, oh, well, we, you know, we may get a second chance. I believe in purgatory. I believe in life after death. I believe that, you know, if you're not, if you're, you know, if, if, you know, if you, you know, if you don't know God or if you just say no to God here, God is such a merciful God that we'll just have this in between that, you know, once we die, we're not really dead. And that's when we really have a second chance. No, that's not it at all. That's not the way it works. The devil's a liar and the father of all lies. You have this time now. You're, you, you, you are a, uh, what's it called? A, a, um, a triune being. You, you are a body. You live in a body, you, you are a spirit, and you're a living soul. So once your body dies, again, we are all eternal beings. We're either going to be in heaven for all eternity or in hell for all eternity. And the moment your body dies, the moment you close your eyes here on earth and you open them up in eternity, you're not, there's no more decision in this. Your decision is the here and now because that's where your triune being is able to receive the gift of eternal life. Do you understand? We're able to, what the Bible says, confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that Jesus is real. Jesus Christ rose again. That Jesus went to the cross and he rose again. This is what it says in the book of Romans. If you believe in your heart and confess Jesus Christ as Lord with your mouth, you will be saved. That's what the Bible says. And so, you know, yes, as the scientists are raising alarm that we are looking at some very, um, th you know, some very, um, uh, uh, you know, concerning things regarding our planet that is very troublesome. It looks like a, uh, you know, an extinction that may be on the horizon. They're sounding the alarm. They're doing their job. That's their position. Our position, my position as a preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ is to do what I can. To reach you, to reach as many as I can, to tell them to get on the boat. Don't don't be in 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 you know don't be out of the boat, which is the ark. I, I you know I, I talk about that. I relate that to what the Bible says regarding the days of Noah. Don't be outside of the ark when the flood comes. The Bible says that a flood is coming, as in the days of Noah were. For, you know, so will the coming of the Son of Man be? The book of Isaiah says, declaring the end from the very beginning. Now is the time. Now is the day of your salvation. In Jesus' name, get saved. All right, so solar storm warning as major blackouts threaten life on Earth. Scientists raise alarm. Scientists have raised the alarm over solar storms causing massive blackouts and threatening life on Earth. Using data from the European Space Agency's ESA cluster and swarm missions, scientists were able to establish a link between the oddly named bursty bulk flows and sudden changes in the Earth's magnetic field. I'll tell you what, friends, the Earth's magnetic field is vital to life on this planet. A weakening of that field is a major concern for everything that contributes to life here on Earth. And right now, this is what we're looking at. We're looking at a weakening of this magnetic field. And it, it can, you know, of course, it would, it would have, you know, concerns for the physical body. It can increase, uh, you know, with, with, with the cancers and, and, you know, sleep patterns. The magnetic field is directly tied to the Earth's natural magnetic field, if you will. And this, this proves to be very troublesome because one would have an effect on the other. Not only that animals we you know i oh my goodness 
My friends, I've shared with you reports after reports of trillions. The number, I would almost have to say it's innumerable. The, the, it's, it's, an, it's an undetermined amount. I don't know if that's the right word to say. It's so much. I don't know if there's a number for it with the amount of mass animal deaths that have happened all across the planet. Virtually every nation on the earth has been untouched or has not, I should say, has been touched. They have not been untouched, if you will, from the deaths of mass animals. I'm not talking about a bird here or there or, you know, a you know, dolphin washing up, a, you know, once every 10 years. That will be bad enough. It is cataclysmic. It is, it is uh, troubling. That's the word I'm using, but there's, it's, it's a greater word. It's, it's, it's bad. <laughs> it is really bad. And so, you know, it's a major sign of the times. Hosea chapter 4 talks about mass animal deaths. Zephaniah chapter 1 prophesies about mass animal deaths and it's all destruction it's and, and and again earth's magnetic field messing up you know messing around with the animals magnetic field their compass if you will and very weird things happening to these creatures major sign of the end times now according to a paper published in geophysical research letters uh, they say researchers studied bursty bulk flows which are fast bursts of ions with typical velocities larger than 150 kilometers. They found a link between solar storms, bursty bulk flows in the inner magnetosphere and disturbances in the ground level magnetic field which drive geomagnetically induced currents on and below Earth's surface. So, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be Okay, I say it's going to be interesting. It already is. I, there's been a lot of flight cancellations. And um, I think the most recent report was that there was over 2,200 flight cancellations across several major airline carriers. And some are blaming, blaming COVID. And I, I believe COVID is absolutely a, a very big part, a huge contributing factor to the reason why all these delays and cancellations. Um, but I also believe that there's a portion of the story that we're not being told. And I, I believe that it has to do with solar storms. I think that uh, the airlines uh, are, have been told on the side that they have to prevent flying in certain times, certain days. It's not pre-scheduled. It's not predetermined. It, it kind of is a hit and miss. It's a last minute thing. It's going to bring frustration to the passengers. But uh, for the sake of making sure that if plane does not enter or f is flying during a major solar storm that is happening in our atmosphere in real time, they have to avoid flying. And so, again, it's not really being talked about in the news, but it's happening. They, you know, there's no confirmation on this, but uh, the confirmation absolutely is out there that solar storms is happening. What's not yet confirmed on the news, but I believe will be probably soon enough, uh, is that, uh, you know, that it's also part of the reason or some of the reason why there has been so many flight cancellations. Of course, COVID-19 is a huge factor in that, but... Uh, you know, we, we have to look at the other factors as well. And this is happening. The solar storms are happening. Now, where does the Bible, does the Bible say anything about solar storms? Well, it, it, it does. And again, the term solar storms is not in the Bible, but the Bible does uh, make direct reference as to what will take place in the sky. Jesus said in the, in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 21, verse 25, he says that there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars. And upon the earth, the distress of nations with perplexity, the seas and the waves roaring. So the nations being perplexed could be because the solar storms will cause massive blackouts. Uh, it could cause, God forbid, a triggered war where uh, some type of a rocket projectile actually ends up uh, you know, being launched into another country and uh, it being seen as a act of war when it was simply uh, a solar storm that caused a malfunction. Something crazy uh, like that could happen. And it's all part of, again, biblical prophecy. I pray war doesn't come out on this, but the point is, is that when all is said and done, it's going to look like war definitely took place on the planet. Uh, anyway, uh, let me show you direct scriptures pertaining to solar flares. I just shared with you the Gospel of Luke, chapter 21, verse 25. Uh, again, there'll be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars. Um, there'll be fearful sights, is what the Bible says. In the book of Revelation, though, it says something a bit more detailed. I want to take you to chapter 16, because it talks about, um, it talks about how, um, 
Solar flares could be a prelude to the second return of Jesus Christ, could be a direct judgment from God himself as being part of possibly the bowls of wrath as recorded in Revelation chapter 16. This is a literal event. Understand that the second return of Jesus Christ is a literal event and so are the judgments of God. These are actual things that must take place. Revelation chapter 6, let's go directly to verse 8. And uh, again, this is what seems to describe this solar storm activity. Then the fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun, and power was given to him to scorch men with fire. And men were scorched with a great heat, and they blasphemed the name of God who has power over these plagues, and they did not repent and give him glory. I mean, listen, friends. I mean, that's it. This is all that's setting itself up. It is preparing us. It's letting us know what is happening and what is to come. Again, it's not God's will that any man perish, but that all come to repentance. Get saved. Get saved. Give your life to Jesus. That's how you get saved. There's no other way for you to get saved or to receive salvation except through Jesus Christ. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to him except through Jesus, except through him. He's the only way. But he's made a way. And he, he, he's, he's wanting, he's willing to receive you now. He's willing to forgive you of your sins. He's willing not only to give you a fresh start, receiving salvation, having your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life, becoming what's called born again. It's not about getting a second chance. It's not about being told everything's okay and go ahead your merry way. It's about being what's called a new creation where old things all pass away. All things become new. All things become of God now. And that's a miracle work that only God himself can do. He literally makes you new. All right, let's go to the last headline. Certainly not least, here it is. I mentioned extinction. Could it be we're in the midst of one? End of the world warning. As Earth enters six mass extinction event. All right, let's talk about it. An expert has claimed that Earth is well into a sixth mass extinction event as the planet is ravaged by floods and rising levels due to human pollution. This is their, their reasoning. They say it's, the, it's, it's mankind. Well, it could also be signs of the times. Mankind being a contributor when they're not saved, sure. Uh, but, it, you know, it's not the fact that you were born just you know it's not it's not the fact that men and women were born that's caused this pollution it's the pollution is really sin but let's get into it let's get into it they're not talking about sin i'm going to put the word of god into this it must be stated anyway to date the earth has had five mass extinction events with the most famous one being a uh, the giant asteroid that wiped out the dinosaurs the devastation caused by that asteroid was historic as 76% of the world's species were wiped out by the asteroid impact and its subsequent after effects. However, this event was not unprecedented in our blue planet's year history, or four, it was, uh, they, they say it's 4.5 billion year history, with two other more devastating near apocalypses occurring before it with four others in total. This is what they're stating. This is scientific research. You could, uh, you know, some of you have maybe done some study and, you know, and, and that's fine, but I'm just reading the article as is. Anyway, scientists believe that a six mass extinction event may be happening right now and could occur in the form of a large scale natural disasters like volcanic eruptions and flooding. Unlike previous events, this mass extinction event will not be caused by an asteroid from outer space but rather by the environmental degradation caused by climate change. Scientists warn that disasters like flooding, drought, and wildfires that are caused by climate change could do as much damage to our planet as a giant asteroid or massive volcanic eruption. All right, six mass extinction event. 
All right, so I thought about that. I said, well, you know, what does the Bible have to say about extinction? Does it have it recorded anywhere? And the first thing that I thought of was the days of Noah. Of course, it was a, 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 a magnificent extinction, not just of man, but of beast. Anything and everything that had the breath of life was extinguished. The flood of judgment was poured upon the entire planet and it rained for 40 days and 40 nights. And the only people that were saved was Noah, <clears throat> excuse me, was Noah and his family. Six people out of scores of people that lived at that time. I want to read to you that portion of scripture found in the book of Genesis. <clears throat> excuse me. Found in the book of Genesis chapter Chapter 1, let's read it in context. It says here, Now it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born to them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were beautiful, and they took wives for themselves of all whom they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall now strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh, yet his days shall be one hundred and twenty years. There were giants on the earth in those days, and also afterward, when the sons of God came in to the daughters of men, and they bore children to them. Those were the mighty men who were of old, men of renown. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing and birds of the air. For I am sorry that, have, that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. So there you have the reason why God sent the flood of judgment. It was a, a, a time of great wickedness now what's profound is that jesus in detailing the last days in, in in his recorded account in the gospel of matthew chapter 24 he says and i quote as it was in the days of noah so will the coming of the son of man be for as in those days they were eating and drinking marrying and giving in marriage until the day that the flood came and washed them all away, so will the coming of the Son of Man be. And so, end of the world warning. Again, this is a report. As Earth enters six mass extinction event, the number six, I just read to you Genesis chapter six, the number six is known as the number of man. The number six is also part of a uh, three-fold accord, if you will, that's found in the book of Revelation, chapter 13, known as a mark of the beast, which is 666. And it says here, Revelation, i got to end the broadcast. Revelation, chapter 16, he, uh, excuse me, Revelation, chapter 13, verse 16, he calls us all both small and great. Rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has a mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His number is 666. Six mass extinction could be because we're looking at this very portion of prophecy along with everything else we just talked about in tonight's broadcast and all the other stuff we talked about in prior broadcasts. Listen, the day of the Lord is at hand. Give your life to Jesus Christ. Jesus loves you. He made a way for you. You don't have to be in sin. You don't have to be in unforgiveness. You don't have to be uh, left out. Yeah, you've been walking the path without God, but that can change in an instant. I pray, I pray that God would help you. I pray that the Holy Spirit would help you to give your life to Jesus now. Friends, I gotta end the broadcast. It is always a pleasure, a blessing to bring forth to you uh, the headlines that uh, match biblical prophecy. 
I want to invite you to learn more about me and my ministry at www.openyoureyespeople.com. I'll be sure to put my website link associated to this broadcast report. And uh, again, if you are in need of a letter of religious exemption, feel free to email me, anita at anemoaf.org. Again, I'll be sure to put my email address to this broadcast report. And don't forget to partake of this year's 2022 First Fruit Offering as we honor the revelation himself, Jesus Christ, and the last book, the last chapter of the last book, chapter 22, as we are in the year 2022 possibly the last chapter. Till the next report, my friends, may you all be richly blessed in Jesus' name. Bye-bye.